everyone, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here. And it is Sunday, so we are doing Breaches of the Week. And this week is absolutely insane. But before I begin, I'd like to thank the following people that sent me messages, tagged me, linked me, whatever it was, to get me a good chunk of these. It's always appreciated. And that would be Jason Dance, Barrett Peterson, Chris Fellon, Jacqueline Wolf, Andrew McLean, and Sanders Slidnerink. Everybody, thank you so much. And with that, let's begin with the Warner Music Group, the massive music conglomerate. They issued a data breach notification following a prolonged skimming attack on an undisclosed number of their e-commerce websites. This was discovered on August 5th, and the personal data compromised in the attack included names, email addresses, telephone numbers, billing addresses, shipping addresses, credit card numbers, card expiration dates, and CVC and or CVV codes. So basically, if you've shopped with them, your credit card in full could be hit. Heads up to you if you shop at Warner Music Group. Now, moving on, let's head on down to Chile and talk about Banco Estado. This is one of uh, Chile's three largest banks. They were forced to shut down all of their branches this past Monday due to a ransomware attack that took place over last weekend. Now, the details of the attack have not been made public, but a source close to the investigation is basically saying that it's revil uh, in terms of uh, ransomware. So heads up if you use Banco Estado in Chile. Moving on. I'm going to give you guys an update on Australia's New South Wales data breach. Uh, if you recall, I believe it was last week I was talking about that or the week before, about 200,000 uh, New South Wales residents were affected by a breach that saw 736 gigabytes of data stolen. Now... Uh, the go governmental entity uh, Service NSW established a hypercare team to help mitigate the effects of this uh, cyber attack, which apparently happened in April, back in April. Now, uh, Service NSW said that people basically whose personal information was compromised would be receiving notifications from the organization, and they've also directed the New South Wales Audit Office to conduct an investigation into Service NSW's handling of personal information. This audit will examine services, process, policies, and governance around data management. Obviously, I like to see governments proactive, so I think that's good news. Moving on, let's talk about a company called Sigilant. They bill themselves out as, I, and as, a, as an, I quote, uh, enterprise class security as a service for threat detection, response, and compliance. On September 4th, they said on Twitter, and I quote, Sigilant is aware of a ransomware attack impacting a portion of Sigilant's technology environment. Our team took immediate and decisive action to stop the progression of attack and is working closely with third-party forensic investigators and law enforcement. And I I think this really underscores two different things. One, organizations, especially in the tech industry, if whether it's cybersecurity, IT, whatever that is, really need to make sure they're focusing internally to continue enhancing their controls and not just outward facing focus to secure their clients because all y'all are basically housing a whole bunch of sensitive data. And so if you're insecure, you're insecure in your customer supply chain. That's a very serious issue. And it also shows that anybody can be hit. No cybersecurity company ever wants to declare a breach. So this is why we need to maintain vigilance in our field. Moving on, let's head on down to Argentina and talk about their official immigration agency, the DNM, or Dirección Nacional de Migraciones. Now, they suffered a NetWalker ransomware attack that temporarily halted border crossings in and out of the country, meaning basically the computer systems that would track people coming in and out of Argentina was not accessible. Now, according to a criminal complaint uh, published by Argentina's cybercrime agency, the government first learned of this ransomware attack from numerous ch uh, tech support calls from various border checkpoints, 7 a.m. on the 27th of August. They're back online now. But that obviously is a bit of a national crisis for Argentina, especially at their border. Moving on, let's talk about the Hartfield, uh, Hartford, Hartford School District in Connecticut. They just got hit with a ransomware attack. And the software that delivers things like real-time information on bus routes was actually impacted. And it crippled the district's ability to serve 4,000 students who take the bus. And that's according to their superintendent. Uh, so basically, they are looking to uh, remediate this and restore these various systems. So uh, hopefully Hartford School District in Connecticut will get back online. 
Moving on, let's talk about Artec Information Systems. They are apparently one of the largest US IT staffing companies, and they just disclosed a data breach by a ransomware attack that affected some of their uh, systems in January of this year. Now, the ransom attack was discovered by Artec after finding ransomware on some of their systems following reports of unusual activities related to one of their employees' user accounts, and Revil or R Evil is uh, suspected to be responsible for this. So hopefully, Artec will get that cleaned up. Moving on, let's talk about Fairfax County School uh, Public Schools in Virginia. This is the largest school district in that state. And to quote, we currently believe we may have been victimized by cyber criminals who have been connected to dozens of ransomware attacks in other school systems and corporations worldwide. We are coordinating with the FBI on that matter. Now, the Mays ransomware group, uh, group is claiming responsibility for this. And Kimberly Adams of the Fairfield Education Association told NBC News in Washington, D.C., that employees need to be aware of this attack in order to protect their own data, which may include private information such as social security numbers. So if you have anything to do with the Fairfax County Public Schools in Virginia, heads up to you. Moving on, I want to give you guys an update on BlackBot. If you recall, at this point, it's probably been at least a couple of months or so, BlackBot that supplies many educational institutions and charities with software had a massive breach, and so everybody's coming out of the woodwork. This past week or so was no different. We are looking at North Shore uh, University Health System in Chicago, 348,000 people affected. Medical University of South Carolina, uh, I don't know how many were affected there. Uh, New Vance Health in Poughkeepsie, Atrium Health in Charlotte, South Carolina. The Greg Newmark Graduate School of Journalism, CUNY Foundation, Life Flight of Maine, Opportunity Alliance of Maine, Northern Light Health Foundation of Maine, Guthrie, New York, uh, their health system. Innova Health System in Washington, D.C. and Northern Virginia, University of Kentucky Healthcare for 163,000 people, Boulder Community Health Foundation in Colorado, University of Nevada, Reno for 200,000 people, University of New Haven, Connecticut, Piedmont Healthcare Atlanta, and Alina Health Office of Philanthropy in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Those are your breaches that I could find uh, thus far, but there are a lot more coming out of the woodwork, and I think I'm going to be reporting on this for quite some time. Moving on, we're going to be going to the UK and talking about Charing Cross Gender Identity Clinic in London. They had a breach on September 6, 2019 that saw two email chains sent to carbon copy instead of blind carbon copy, thus revealing the names and email addresses of around 900 people in each email. Some of these individuals also have their highly sensitive medical and personal information shared with everybody in the chain, which is obviously a very serious breach of patient confidence. Now, a consumer action law firm called Your Lawyers is representing multiple claimants against Charing Cross Gender Identity Clinic, which is one of seven gender identity clinics in England that provide uh, health care for trans and non-binary people. And they said each victim could be eligible uh, for up to £30,000 in compensation. This is why we train our employees frequently. So stuff like this is, is continuously checked and filtered through them. Please keep training your, uh, your, uh, your staff. Moving on, let's head on over to Finland real quick. Their social insurance institution, or Kella, apologized after the use of a type of paper that could have led to a breach of personal data. And this is interesting. In a press release, Kella said customers' details may have been partially visible through the envelope window, like the address window, in a batch of approximately 80,000 letters that were sent on August 26th and 27th. So it seems like they need thicker envelopes because thin paper causes data breaches, apparently, on the uh, social insurance institution side of Finland. Moving on. Let's talk about a company called Telne uh, Telmate. Excuse me. They are a widely used prison phone service here in the United States. Millions of inmates and their contacts were exposed online. Now, the company behind this app is called Getting Out, which gives prisoners a way to be uh, to make monitored voice and video calls and to send texts to their loved ones. Security researcher Bob Diachenko discovered an unsecured database in early August containing. 11 million records of inmates and their contacts, as well as 227 million message records. That is a ton. The prisoners' records came with full names, their offense, in other words, why they're in prison, religion, the facility that they're at, their relationship status, the medications they're taking, and even whether they're, uh, they identify as something like trans. Meanwhile, 
their contact records include their names, their email, uh, physical and even IP addresses, their phone numbers and driver's license ID details. That is an absolute massive breach, not just for those incarcerated, but also the contacts that uh, they are obviously talking to. So huge problem and hopefully tell, tell mate will lock that down. Moving on, uh, let's talk about Digital Point. They describe themselves, and, uh, and I quote, as the largest webmaster community in the world. An unsecured Elasticsearch database containing over 62 million records was exposed. In total, data belonging to 863,412 Digital Point users was included in this leak. We're talking names, email addresses, and internal user ID numbers were made publicly available. And so hopefully Digital Point has that locked down. <clears throat> Moving on, let's talk about Equinix. They are one of the world's largest on-demand co-location data centers. Basically, you're building a knock or a sock, you can go to them. In a short statement that they published on their website, Equinix said that it found ransomware on its internal systems, but but the main core of its customer facing services are unaffected and i quote our data centers and our service offerings including managed services remain fully operational and the incident has not affected our ability to support our customers and to reinforce that if you go back and look no major outages have been reported since that disclosure or shortly before so i think they've got it locked down and if you're a customer facing side you appear to be okay but heads up equinix users moving on let's talk about the european cryptocurrency exchange Etterbase, this is out of Slovakia, they disclosed a massive breach on their network by an unknown group of hackers who stole cryptocurrencies worth $5.4 million US. I don't have much more than that, but heads up if you use Etterbase out of Slovakia. Moving on, I want to talk about the Moffitt Cancer Center. Uh, basically, they had a briefcase that was uh, stolen and is exposing the data of 4,056 cancer patients. Now, patients' name, dates of birth, and information about their medical treatment was stored in two unencrypted storage devices inside the briefcase, according to the Moffitt uh, Cancer Center. And so hopefully, uh, they're going to get that cleared out. But there you go. If you, if you have anything to do with them, heads up. Moving on, let's head on over to Israel and talk about Tower Semiconductor. They said that some of their systems were hit by a cyber attack, and as a result, they were putting a hold on some of their server and manufacturing operations. Not much more uh, is known at this time. They specialize in analog chips used in things like automobiles, mobile phones, infrastructure, medical and aerospace equipment, as well as defense markets. So this could be a very serious problem if their chips were infected or their code was compromised. I obviously will keep you up to date on that, but if you have anything to do with Tower Semiconductor, heads up. Moving on. Let's talk about Uber competitor Grabcar out of Singapore. Uh, their pro Singapore's privacy regulator imposed a $10,000 or Singapore dollar, which is 7,300 US penalty on uh, Grabcar for a personal data breach incident last year. And th that this breach also raised uh, the alarm on other repeated violations. Now, here's what happened in August of 2019, an update of Grab Mobile's application exposed the personal data of more than 21,500 users to risk of unauthorized access, according to Singapore's Personal Data Protection Commission. The breach, which included the profile names, uh, uh, profile pictures, profile names, full names, wallet balance of users, vehicle plate numbers, and more, was related to Grab Hitch, which is one of their services that allows for car pooling. The glitch was fixed in less than an hour, according to the report. Nevertheless, here we are. And if you use Grab Car or Grab Hitch, heads up to you. Moving on, let's talk about the California Employment Development Department. They started receiving uh, reports from across the state from Californians who received strange deliveries of unemployment benefit letters and debit cards addressed to other people. So the EDD announced Thursday, this past Thursday, that they are working with law enforcement to investigate. They say they believe scammers might be trying to, excuse me, intercept redirect or gather mail from fake claims. And I don't know what's been going on since the pandemic, but I have literally reported on multiple states, including my own state here of Illinois and surrounding states and California, that basically people are trying to file for unemployment and their data is getting exposed. I don't necessarily know if this is malicious or not, if it or, or, or if it's just bad programming. But if I recall, the last one I was talking about was the state of Kentucky, where if you were an employment beneficiary and you'd go to their website, you would see other people's information. So this just is, this just isn't California. 
and I hope they're coordinating at the federal level and with other states that are experiencing similar things. Moving on, let's talk about um, Northwest Northwestern medicine in the Chicagoland area here. And I actually think my local hospital uh, is a Northwestern hospital as well. Like, don't quote me on that. That this healthcare center has notified 56,000 people that their personal records were accessed earlier this year. Uh, the hospital reported the breach to the United uh, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Northwestern Memorial said that the incident was not targeted at the health system and did not involve uh, involve access to its electronic medical systems. I don't know much more about that, but heads up if you use Northwestern Medicine. Moving on, we're going to the state of Pennsylvania, and we're talking about applicants to the bar exam. That's right. That's what you do to become an official lawyer, from what I understand. Several Pennsylvania bar uh, exam applicants published a letter to the Pennsylvania Bureau of Consumer Protection this past Wednesday requesting an investigation into ExamSoft, which is a software being used to administer their upcoming October bar exam. Now, the applicants uh, expressed concern of recent data breaches that resulted from basically what they're calling fundamental security flaws within the exam so uh, soft site. If you recall a couple weeks ago, I had talked about a website being breached called ProctorU. This is actually one of their sites. And so this is actually a very serious issue here. In this letter, multiple applicants reported that they had password breaches and fraudulent charges on financial accounts in the days following them downloading the ExamSoft software, meaning the last time they used their credit card or whatever it was, was to get ExamSoft. And now suddenly they've got uh, password change breaches and credit cards being hit. A letter expresses concern regarding ExamSoft's uh, storage of applicant social security numbers and video and audio data after the uh, Association for Software Testing remarked that, and I quote, a cursory examination of, ex of the ExamSoft website finds very intrusive features that grant device access a hacker would dream of. Software with this level of control over an examee's computer represents a significant security risk to examees. That's obviously a very serious problem. And if you are soon to take the bar exam in Pennsylvania, hit me up. I might be able to change your grades. Just kidding. Please don't. Hopefully, uh, ExamSoft will get this, uh, uh, or yeah, ExamSoft will get this uh, straightened out. Moving on, Let's talk about Razer Gaming. Uh, they're the ones that make those really cool mice. I actually happen to have one on my uh, desk, as well as other gaming accessories and all of that. Uh, once again, I'm talking about Bob Diachenko here, the researcher, because he ran across a misconfigured Elasticsearch data, uh, database cloud cluster that exposed a segment of Razer's infrastructure to the public internet. It contained information uh, such as full name, email, phone number, customer internal ID, order number, order details, billing and shipping address. Now, this Elasticsearch cluster was misconfigured for public access since August 18th of 2020, and it was indexed by public search engines like Google. Apparently, around 100,000 Razer customers are affected. So if you've been to Razer's uh, online store and you've bought a cool mouse or whatever it is, and they do make cool stuff, you are probably exposed. I did not get mine from Razer com or whatever their website is. Moving on, I want to talk about um, web.com. And this is one of my last two breaches. And I think this one is going to possibly have some very serious uh, repercussions because web.com is a massive registrar provider. And a lot of people don't know exactly who they own. Now, cyber criminals access the contact details, including names and addresses of current and former account holders with web.com. And this is where it gets interesting, as well as their subsidiaries network solutions and register.com so those three combined are probably the largest registrar base in uh the in the internet and they're owned by web.com no credit card information was compromised though according to web.com company statement because they're saying that it was encrypted in a pci dss uh compliant manner hopefully that is true but if you have ever registered a website on web.com, network solutions, or register.com, again, three of the most massive things ever, and I know people here that are listening to me or watching me have done that, heads up to you, you might want to check in. That is a very serious issue. And finally, 
I have to talk about uh, the very last thing we're going to be talking about here in Breaches of the Week, and this is incredibly unfortunate, but it is George Floyd. Now, if you recall, this is the, the poor unfortunate soul who had a knee on his neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds uh, by the police. He died, and this obviously sparked all of the protests and kicked off a whole bunch of stuff we've been seeing for the last few months. Now, when... He, when Floyd died, he was taken to the Hennepin Med, uh, County Medical Center uh, in Minnesota after this just horrific and tragic event. Now, unfortunately, and you probably know where I'm going with this, the Hennepin County Medical Center has confirmed that George Floyd's medical data was breached multiple times since his death. Uh, family attorney Antonio uh, Romanucci said Floyd's family was contacted via letter by the hospital about the breaches. I kind of feel like this is something they really should have done in person, given the sensitivity of who this person is. Just my God. So to quote uh, the lawyer Romanucci, the letter said there were breaches of his data over multiple dates and that the employees involved are no longer with the organization. So this is what happened. Basically, employees of that medical facility got interested and in violation of HIPAA, they went ahead and accessed medical records that they had no business uh, accessing. Obviously, all of that is audited and tracked in medically compliant databases, and so they're, no, they're going to know who was accessing this stuff, and they're going to know very, in, uh, very, very quickly and specifically if they are monitoring this, and apparently they were. Now, the Floyd's family doesn't know what kind of records were accessed. KARE 11, which I believe is a local TV station there, is reporting that employees involved were fired for HIPAA violations, and a number of staff employees uh, were involved in properly accessing Floyd's medical records, and that is according to many news sources reporting on this. This is obviously a very serious problem, and we've seen this before. UCLA Medical got in, uh, in trouble, I want to say like 10, 15 years ago or so, when their employees were accessing, I believe it was Britney Spears' information when she was checked in there for whatever it was, and I think they were there trying to sell it to the Inquirer, right? it, if I'm remembering correctly. Nobody is saying that somebody is trying to sell George Floyd's information to a news source like the Inquirer or anything like that, but that's obviously... A very serious issue because that might spark a whole other round of protests if something gets out and they are trying to craft and shape the information, you know, whatever that is. Bottom line is you shouldn't be doing these kinds of things and I feel really bad for the family. It's hard enough losing a family member but but then to have this happen, not to mention see your family member either lauded or or, uh, or, or basically denigrated on TV, depending on what side you're on of this entire argument. It just sucks all the way around. And so hopefully uh, no more breaches will happen. Hopefully none of that information will get out there. And hopefully uh, we can all come to terms with this. So those were your breaches of the week. It was an absolutely bonkers week as always. Thanks to everybody that sent me information. And if you've got tips for me, please send them my way. Were you affected? Let me know. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, everyone.